And this is part two of my playthrough of The Legend of Zelda, or Hyrule Fantasy, playing on the Famicom Disk System emulator. Just completed level five, and have done a bunch of scouring of this overworld, looking for various power-ups and treasures. A few more to get as we make our way to level six. As I play through this game, I'm translating all the Japanese text into English. So I will be, because it's an old game, I'll be taking the katakana characters, since the system doesn't really support the full character set, turning it into proper Japanese script, then a phonetic translation, a literal word-for-word -word translation, and then my interpretation of what it actually means. It's fun to compare it to the original translated English version. And with that, just going to continue making my way across Hyrule, heading towards level 6. So many of these statues. Here's that power bracelet I was looking for. This actually enables me to access the warp zones. I can move those rocks out of the way that I always think look like snails. Snail rocks. A little bit of everything going on here. Kind of hate these flowers. You can't ever touch them while they're moving. You have to wait till they get tired and come down. Most useful clock ever. Tsukai Konasarunara Kore o Sezukiyo. We already translated this one in video one when we got the white sword. Exactly the same text for the magic sword. The big long word is use, be able to, if, so if you can use, kore, this, suzuki yo, I'll give you. So he'll give me the sword if I can use it, and apparently I can. So I now have the most powerful sword. I have the power bracelet. I have tons of other good items. Oh, that's so satisfying to just take those guys out in one hit. Tsukina Michi o Yuke. Tsukina means favorite. Michi means road. O makes the road an object in the sentence. Yuke means go. Go down your favorite road or choose the road you like. So this is essentially the warp zone of this game. There's four, I believe, different pathways. So each one you go in, you get a choice of three others. And then they just take you to one of the different places. You sort of memorize which one's which. And you can get pretty far away from where you were. So I just warped over here so I could finish collecting a bit of stuff. Most importantly, I want to make sure I get some medicine. Now that I'm finally getting some money again. I've been stone broke for so long. Ever since I bought that ring of defense.
All right, let's activate this letter. And boom, I now have access to the store. And I am one rupee shy of the red potion, which is not cool. But there we go. I got it. So now let's get the red guy. Same thing as the blue one, except the red gives you two chugs. The blue only gives you one. So now I get to heal twice. Definitely don't want to leave that on, because it's very irritating to use a potion by accident by pushing the wrong button when I think I'm about to shoot a boomerang or something. Just a wee bit more treasure hunting here. This one's a real sneaky one. So I believe that's all the outstanding hearts. The remaining three I get from defeating levels six, seven, and eight. No hearts for me in level nine. Seems like it would be kind of mean to give you a heart right after you beat Cannon and never have to face an enemy again. Can't remember every single burnable tree, but apparently that was not it. Now I'm just a little lost and confused. I'm gonna go back to level six. Yeah, I think it's down here to the left. Yeah, this is feeling right. Mustard yellow. Get prettier and prettier. I know I have an extra key. Could have gone in there. Ooh, whiz robes. These guys are blue urns, especially the blue ones. Goma no me o nerai. Goma is the boss of this level. No makes it a possessive, so Goma apostrophe s. Me means I. O makes the I an object. And nerai means aim. Aim for Goma's eye. Ouch, that does seem pretty dirty, and I bet it would hurt. So with that, I've come to realize that it's time to get the arrows that I've been holding off going to buy. And rather than spend a long time messing around, I figured I would just super speed this bit. Let you see that, yes, I did indeed go and get the arrows. Sort of grinding a little bit to make sure I have enough rupees to get the arrows. Let's 
super speed. Ruby collecting. Almost there. I think I needed 80. I think I got what I need. There we go. Arrows are in my possession. And now I need to make sure I have lots of rupees so that I can, in fact, continue to shoot as many times as I need to to take out Mr. Goma's eye. Alright. Here we are, back in level 6. I'm going to go the other way now because I've done what I need to do over there. And more of these bloody wizard robes. They don't even reappear. I've got the clock on. Fine. Who needs them anyway? So much more satisfying to take these guys out when they don't do that stupid split thing. Into the compass! Look at that. Our Triforce is in the upper right corner of the map. That never happens. Ooh, these things shooting at me are annoying. And the spike traps. Mm, lots going on here. Nothing like having my sword disabled on me while I'm trying to deal with, oh my goodness, with all these whiz robes. And they just spam if they kind of catch you standing there. I don't think I've seen anything else in this game that can just kind of melt my life away at that same rate. Whew. That's enough of that. I like that though. See you later, blueies. More of these bastards. Seems like a good time to use one of my potions. If I dare say so myself. Funny how these levels or rooms with just the total mixed bag of different monsters is always just feels a little more daunting and chaotic. Oop, map. Like it. Oh. Look at this guy. Three headed now. And he doesn't even seem to be the boss, but because I walked into this room, I am now required to deal with him. Well, thank you for going down easy. Oh, I just like those other guys. I can take these guys out and actually get stuff from them. 
They're not splitting into bats for me anymore. Yeah, yeah. Every now and then those clocks happen at a time I really like. Wow, this did not give me a very nice place to land coming out of that secret passage. I feel like I might be kind of near the boss area where I'm really probably more wanting to be getting the level's treasure. Yeah, this isn't... I might need to backtrack just a little bit. I just don't remember everything, you know? And there goes my last potion. But at least I had it. It's funny it gives me the letter back. Funny when they just appear basically on top of my sword. Alright, three keys should be enough to open this one door. Ugh. Thank you for just magically appearing on top of me. Secret stairwell. Aha! The magic rod. Now I can act like a wizard robe and send little spell waves of death at everybody.
Another trap room, of course. Goodness, there's so many. I think one of the most annoying things about the blue wizard robes is they do not really bounce back when you hit them, so they're always just continuing to move towards you. So if you hit them, you kind of have to back off right away. Yosei no sumanu yemi niwa himitsu ga aru. Yosei is the Japanese word for fairy. Sumanu is the negative form of live, so do not live. Niwa, in this case, comes out as where. Himitsu means secret. Ga makes the secret the sentence is subject, and Aru means B. There is a secret where fairies don't live. I guess we'll have to find a place where a fairy should live, but doesn't. Speaking of which, just got a nice little fairy. So clearly this is not the place. What he's actually referring to is a fairy fountain on the overworld that seems to have either never hosted a fairy, or the fairy went away and let the fountain get decrepit. We'll go find that in a little bit. Back through this secret passage, find that boss area that we kind of went to the first time. But this time, we'll actually go take on the boss. These guys are back, spamming me with the spells. Take a little trip down the trap down here. Oof. Love it when I get stuck on a ladder and can't move when those guys are coming at me. Definitely not a bad idea to have some light in here. Makes things a little easier. But what a mean place for a trap, right before the boss. No purpose here other than just to whittle down my precious hearts. Oh, and I guess a couple bombs, which aren't really all that useful since apparently it's arrows that we need to take this level down. Had that happened before, you can walk through the doors and not get hit, but if there's a lock there, that little delay can be enough to get you. All right, this creepy little spider thing. Not sure why it has an eye that it can open if it can shoot at me so well, even with it closed. Open to me. All right, I like the one hit that. And here we go, piece of the Triforce number six. Only two more left. That little clue about the fairy not living somewhere, if I recall, is what we need when we want to try to get into level 7. So let's see what we can do about that. Oh, this is kind of lame. Just coming right up the ladder at me and no way to hurt it or avoid it. And it's going to do it again. And apparently, oh, there we go, he went off. I'm gonna use a little secret warp zone again. I have no way memorized which stair does what, but we'll give it a try. Eh, 
This isn't too bad. At least back down in the southern part of the map. Level 7 isn't too far away from where level 3 was. But it hasn't been accessible until somewhat recently. So it'd probably be smart to get some potion at this point before I head into yet another level. They are getting more complicated, more devious, more brutal. It's very generous with hearts and fairies when I got full life. All right, red potion. Ho! I feel much better now. It is so much nicer having the one hit kill on everything. All right, up here. And we have the fairy spring with the dead trees and the enemy in it and no fairy. And when you're in a secret place, what better thing to do than blow the flute and drain the spring? What could be more obvious? We're back to the green. Much more soothing than some of those more off-putting colors. Two fairies and bombs. I like it. It's kind of fun when you find, like, there's one guy, if you kill it, takes out everything else in the room. It doesn't seem to happen too often. And I'm not really sure what triggers it, something I do, or if it's just sort of another, like, random drop kind of feature or what, but... In those rooms when it's really full, if you get that one really quick, it can be pretty neat. Another dig dogger. You get more and more of these sort of previous bosses just hanging out in a room now. Not as intense as Death Mountain will be. Oh, these guys, one hit. I love it. Probably should have just Upgraded all my swords real fast. Megane wa shie no iriguchi. Megane means glasses. The me part is I, which can be helpful in remembering. The iwa means rock. In the English versions, this is translated as spectacle rock. Wa makes spectacle rock our subject. She means death, among many other things. She is also the number four. It's one reason why a lot of the time four is pronounced as yon instead. Less bad juju. The particle e gives motion for two. And a second particle no makes it possessive. It's the two belonging to death. Iriguchi means entrance. Spectacle Rock is the entrance to death. It was called Death Mountain in the English translations. This guy in fact told us to find an arrow in Death Mountain, meaning the silver arrow, so a bit of a difference in this one. So carrying on. More of these boomerang dudes. I just forget what their names were. But 
And as you can see, the levels are getting more complex, more maze-like. There's just always different routes you can take to get around. And definitely more little secret rooms to bomb out. Found my way back to the entrance. For all these walled off areas, they sure loaded up with spike traps and monsters. Keep doing what good explorers do. Make them right there. Oh my goodness, more of these. I always forget that when they're stunned, you can hit them with a the sword. I'm just trying to make them eat the bomb, because I know that tends to work pretty well too. But since it takes two bombs, and I'm good at wasting them. I never seem to quite have enough to get rid of them all. Fortunately, I don't need to. The second guy trying to sell me an upgrade to my bomb capacity. Bakudan, bombs. Moto, more. Mochi Taijiro, would you like? But as luck would have it, I only ever encounter those guys when I'm broke, so no more bombs for me. And I've never really found that this game is that urgent about having more bombs except for maybe trying to beat those dodongos but i've never been in a situation where i have to do that either so we'll just keep moving on not worth the grind at this point these little spark balls get so tiresome Dugger. This is a fun evolution, splitting the three instead of just the one. At least they're not stronger or anything. It's always special when we see these more sparkly floors. Definitely building quite a key collection, too. Presumably there's going to be more locked doors to do, find. And here's one right as we speak. we find Mr. Butsu Butsu or Grumble Grumble. That's his way of telling us that he's hungry and he's just gonna block us off. The only thing I can do is give him something to eat and to do that I need to get some meat which I didn't do so just like the last time when I had to go and get my arrows I'm just gonna take care of this and do it in fast motion get us back to Mr. Grumble Grumble. All right, moving right along. Just take care of his cranky stomach 
And on we go. Covered a good amount of ground in this dungeon already. About time we find the map. Whenever I see one of those little void spaces in the middle, I'm always like, I'm pretty sure there's a secret room in there. There's only so many patterns of the floor, but sometimes with these, when you get stuck on the ladder a bunch of times, it's easier just to see what we're dealing with. Check out this little top corner, maybe. So I'm suspicious about this little northwestern corner, and lo and behold, another secret room. A little stash of rupees. It's kind of fun, but the way this game works, it doesn't amount to much. It's pretty skippable. Just a lot going on here. It's nice that it gives me lots of uh, hearts and fairies, though. Seems like a pretty important secret room. A little bomb refill and a life refill. All right, what diabolical things lie down there? We'll find out in a minute. I want to finish up this little area. Just now I know why I had all those keys. That room wasn't the most useful one I've ever been in. Holy cow, another one of these guys. I guess this is where they all came from. bomb. 
Ooh, these hand things are so annoying. Even better with sparks, so I can't actually hit them. Pretty sure that's a movable block, but I guess because I haven't cleared all the monsters, it's not going to happen for me. Got to take these guys out. How many are there? Yeah, here it is. Nice isolated room that we can't get to from anywhere else. But it was also very clearly the entrance to the boss. So I probably should have just gone down that other staircase when I was there, because that's probably the treasure room. candle upgrade. So with the red candle, I can now use the flame as many times as I want. So if I was going to go and explore and try to burn down all the trees in the forest and find all the little secret rooms, I could do that. But it's just a bunch of people either giving me money or taking my money away. I don't think there's any more special things because I've got all the hearts that I can carry. I'm going to get one in this level and one more in level 8. And that'll max me out. And I think I've got all the just sort of upgrades and items hanging around. The only one I never dealt with was the big shield. Because it just annoys me when it gets eaten by those little like-like baskets. <laughs> so I think I'm just going to take on the boss now and finish up with this level 7. Need to walk into a random boomerang first. Nothing like a little magic spell ray. Wow, they didn't make that guy any harder at all. Only one more Triforce piece left. Alright, level 8. Most inconspicuous entrance ever. Got like the grand little palace structures, we've got the dead trees, we've had the lake bed, this last one, you kind of just have to really be messing around. And I'll admit, when I was a kid and I was playing this game, I found this one pretty early and pretty accidentally, and it was not fun trying to deal with it at the state I was in. 
but it definitely made him sure I never forgot. So we're going to head back pretty close to where level 2 was. Forest area is always so pleasant. Makes you think, oh man, Hyrule's alright. Minus all the murderous octopuses and little goblin guys, anyway. Level 2 is just in the north. But this tree's annoying. It's in my way. Oh, look at that! Burnt it down, and there's a place I can go. What could this be? It's level 8. This one's pretty big and obviously starts off where you can go all over the place. But nothing to do but make our way through. Most useful clock ever. Can't really avoid the spark, so I'll just carry on. These guys are ridiculous. Good, we've got those little stupid knights again. All right, that could have been worse. Wow, that was really fast to be able to find an object. But here we get the Bible. It's a passive item, but it upgrades my magic wand. So instead of just sending little whiz robe magic waves out, it sends them out and then burns whatever it touches. Very pious, working with black magic and then amplifying it to be even more destructive in black. I found an opening. Come on, walk into the bomb. There we go. Now well, they keep finding ways to make this more fun. Compass. Good start.
not in the northeast corner for once. Okay. That is a clock I can get behind. Get over how many rooms they decided to have no lights in. It's not like it's a lot of work to light up the room. This makes me have to go into my menu more. Unless I keep the candle out. Building up a collection of keys, so I'm assuming at some point I'm going to find a bunch of doors. Ooh, a blue one this time. And does not seem to want to die with a single hit. Always makes me need to make that dunk 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 from Wizards and Warriors. Now where's the bomb upgrade guy now that I got my hundred rupees? Ooh, I was expecting to see a dragon there, because he seems to like this layout. gonna take me? I don't know. Ooh, that's pretty close to the Triforce. So the boss should be right above me. However, the door is not. Guys always take forever. Ryan no Kagio Sagase. Ryan in Katakana sounds out lion, then the no particle to make it a property. Kagi means key. 
So the lion key. O makes the lion key an object in the sentence, and sagasa means search. Search for the lion key. This guy in the English version just says, the tenth enemy has the bomb. I think that means we get a bomb drop for every tenth enemy we kill, but I haven't really been tracking that to see if that's true. Back through the passage here, and we're just going to keep on moving our way towards the Triforce. Gonna have to blow up some walls and keep making our own little roots. So glad to see another one of these. Oh, finally the map. Actually, this level doesn't look as intense as it could. I feel like I've already been through most of it. Things keep hitting me and knocking me out of the way when I'm trying to shoot my arrow. Ugh. Makes them very hard to hit. Uh-oh. Starting to think I might need a medicine. Two hits, only one more. Goodness. There we go. So much tension. door into another off-the-map room. Starting to really be a lot of those in these later levels. I guess a little bit of treasure is always nice. this one the charm? Well, at least we have passages somewhere. I guess this would be that lion key I was hearing about. So, if you notice, my key count has now turned into A. So, basically, this is like uh, the magic key in Zelda 2. So, I can now open any door. I don't care about collecting keys any further. Make Death Mountain a lot more manageable. sort of starting with the linked past changed the magic key to the boss key where you need that to open the boss door in every level and then you have to collect all the little keys as you move on but in these first two games they weren't so complicated Because in a lot of those games, finding the boss key was like the biggest task in each level. 
some of them you'd start off pretty much right there at the boss door and it would be teasing you because it's there but you can't go in all right so the boss room is right above me now have to go around. Don't really need to deal with those guys again. This guy seemed to forget that I already have the Lion Key. Or maybe he couldn't tell. I don't know. But I do have it. My key count says so. I'm not sure, can I just bomb the wall here, maybe? And why, yes, it appears I can. So I don't want to handle the boss with three hearts, so let's just use up that last bit of medicine. I can get some more. And see what this level has in store for me. Oh, another one of these guys four heads this time. Eventually I'm going to just end up with one of these where it's like the entire room is just filled with heads. But I will take that, the final heart container. So I'm full hearts. And I will claim this, the final Triforce piece. I believe I now have everything I need to take on Death Mountain and face Mr. Ganon the Terrible. Once upon a time, known as Ganondorf before he corrupted himself to this level that he is in this case. Definitely a shadow of his former self though. I've been talking a little bit about the timeline of all the Zelda games previously. According to the Hyrule Historia, published by Dark Horse, the whole thing really started with the Skyward Sword adventures. Then we had the Minish Cap, following that, the Four Swords adventure, and then the Ocarina of Time. The Ocarina of Time created a fracturing of events where we have three separate eras. One based on the triumphant hero, where we have a few things as Link is a child, the adult era, where Link is older, and then we have where the hero was defeated in the Ocarina of Time, which led to the decline of Hyrule. That declining situation is the one that this particular game falls into. The first one is the Link to the Past, where we've started that whole state of decline. Then we have Oracle of Seasons and the Oracle of Ages. Then we have Link's Awakening. And after all that, we end up in a situation where we have this game, The Legend of Zelda, followed by the adventures of Link. The other timeline, we go straight to Majora's Mask. Then the Twilight Princess, Four Swords Adventures, which is different than Four Swords. Then we have The Wind Waker, Phantom Hourglass, and finally Spirit Tracks. We don't know where Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom land in this particular chronology at this point, but that's a bit of the history, and here we are at Spectacle Rock. Let's dive into Death Mountain. We've had many clues as to the location, but this little goggle scene 
one of these eyes. Here we go. So into Death Mountain we go. It was very affectionately titled here as Level 9. And if you think it looks simple now, just wait till we see the map. Because we have the key, though, we don't actually have to explore everything. There was a guy here that was like, unless you have the Triforce, you're not going anywhere. But we have the Triforce, so he is, I guess, retired. So I'm going to try to take a fairly direct route through here. I am not going to take the super long path that would be needed if I didn't have the magic key. Or I guess, uh, sorry, the lion key. I didn't bother stocking up on health potion before I came in here. So, chances are you're going to see my health jump around a few times as I die or something and then have to come back. And maybe at some point I will decide I need to go and get potions. I won't make you watch that, though, if that is needed. What is needed is the red ring. Bring that damage down to a quarter. The silver key, or the silver arrow, because Ganon cannot be defeated without that. Here we're seeing the effect of the Bible with the little flames every time that hits something. There are so many secret passages in this one. Well, I guess they're not that secret because they're there, but it gets really complicated to explore this one because you just kind of warp all over the place. And here we are up at the top of the map. Mob of like likes coming to get me, but since I didn't bother getting the big shield, they're just going to stay hungry. I'm glad there's so many wizard robes. Yeah, it's kind of nice with the Bible. You can actually use the magic rod to light up a room rather than just the candle. Many, many bombs are needed to properly explore this place. And lots of really fun rooms full of wizard robes. All right, glad to have the compass. When we get the map, it'll be more evident why they call this Death Mountain. Oh, these guys are brutal. Nothing hurts them except for my sword. And the way they kind of flail them around sure makes it uncomfortable trying to hit them. Sort of got to find the right distance. Because if you go in close, he just does that. And you can't touch the big blue head until you get rid of all of those little ones.
All right. Time to continue anyway. They bring back a little bit of everything in this one. Just doing this. All right. As you can see, pretty big level. It's almost as big as the whole overworld. Shaped like a skull. And as we can see, the compass is pointing us straight to the left eye. Like I can't get that red ring fast enough. These guys are hitting me hard. And of course, it is to be expected that. Oh, nice! Yeah, it was a great time to get a clock. The enemies, or the blank spaces on the map, are pretty much gonna have secrets in them. And lo and behold, the red ring. Now the purple togs have been swapped for red ones. No more green link, no more purple link. Remember in Zelda 2, when you cast the shield spell, he kind of turns this color. I think for the most part he stays pretty green and subsequent games though sort of his trademark just doing a little bit of backtracking because now I need to make my way to get that silver arrow always got a little bit of remembering to do though Got a little map here that I'm trying to keep an eye on as well. Tonari no Hea e Yuke. Tonari means next. The no makes it possessive. Hea is room. E means to. Yuke means go. Go to the next room. Didn't I just come for the next room? I can only guess that means I'm to bomb my way in. We got the red ring in the room to the right, so obviously it's the left. This guy is consistent with the English version. Always a pleasure to take down more whiz robes, though. So I'm going to keep on keeping on. And lo and behold, another little passage. Take me off to another part of the dungeon. Down here in the bottom middle again. And a little closer to the compass point. But that doesn't mean much. He gets kind of zapped all over the place. This guy's a little different. He's sort of doing the little ring orbits instead of expanding and send them at me. He's sort of doing little ellipticals. 
seemed a bit easier to deal with, too. Alright. Through the passage yet again. And we're in the other corner now. I don't know why these blue guys make me spaz out so much, but they do. And here we go, the silver arrow. That Ganon better be quaking in his boots now. That was officially all I need to take him out. Well, that and to find him, I suppose. Small detail. Believe it or not, back in the day, this dungeon was quite the process to figure out when you didn't have maps or anything else. There was no online. You could go and look it up. You might be able to get a Nintendo Power subscription or something, but uh, otherwise it was you and your friends figuring it out on your own. Like this game in general, I know it's like a two and a half hour playthrough and I'm not even doing it super fast, but if you were doing it blind, completely on your own, this took months. And what glorious months they were. Cannon's room is literally one to the left. But I cannot get there from here. There's a little bit of a mean trick here. The stairs appear directly under Mr. Spike, so you kind of got to get him to go and then head on down. If you weren't paying attention, it'd be easy to not even see it. Now, way up here again. It's like the streets of Paris. Let's make it as indirect inconvenient as possible.
our passage. All right, here is the guardian of Ganon's room. Let's make him not there. And as I promised, I snuck off while you weren't looking, got myself some potion, and I'm going to use it. Oop, there we go. Triforce. Ganon's like, oh no. He's still invisible, but he's been weakened enough that my sword can hit him. Kind of just have to randomly stab at the air and hope you find him. Until... He's down. There we go, got him again. He doesn't really take too many hits, to be honest. Oh, there he goes. He's been weakened. Time to hit him with a silver arrow. And he's dust. And there is the Triforce he was holding on to. I now have the power and the Wisdom Triforces. And I'm going to now go up here and see what the Lady Princess has to say. Oh no, she's on fire. Fortunately, these fire are destroyable with a sword. And there we go. Arigato Rinku, Anato no Hairaru no Ayudes. Thank you, Link. You Hyrule's hero are. Thus, Hyrule to peace returned. With that, this story end is. And now let's just watch the brief little credits roll by. And with that, we get the polite offer to start a new quest. So if you do a new game, all the dungeons move to new locations and their maps all change so you can have the fun of playing all over again. It's actually kind of a neat thing for a game of this time. So if you want to do that, press the start button to go again. But for here, I'd say that's it for this particular playthrough. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to like and subscribe and maybe if you learned something new, that's great. And definitely check out my other videos and let me know if there's any other games you'd love to see translated this way. Good night.